to you, or hello in Ukraine. I'm so excited to take you on an adventure with me. We're headed across the Atlantic Ocean to the continent of Europe and to the country of Ukraine. Did you know that Ukraine is home to some of the most beautifully decorated Easter eggs in the world? They call these pasenkas, and you'll learn more about them soon. You'll even make one of your own. Although Ukrainian is the main language of Ukraine, most Ukrainians speak Russian as well as a second language. Or do you know how to say any words in another language? Ready to learn more about Ukraine? Fasten your seatbelts. Here we go. Oh, I just remembered. We have some friends we need to check in on. Sprouts. Welcome to Musical Sprouts. This is the Ukrainian flag and the capital is Kiev. The population of Ukraine is around 42 million. The money they use is hryvnia. Thanks kids for the information. We'll see you again soon. Those are our Ukrainian friends and we're definitely going to see them again as we do our journey through Ukraine. Now back to the lesson. Today, we'll learn about the geography of Texas and Ukraine. I bet you already know a lot of facts about Texas. We'll begin by using something called a compass rose. A compass is a symbol used on a map to help us know which way to go. A compass has four letters, N for north, E for east, S for south, and W for west. An easy way to remember the letters on a compass rose is to use this acronym, never eat soggy waffles. Can you say that with me? Never eat soggy waffles. Let's go over to our geography lab. Welcome to my geography lab. First, let's be sure we can find Texas on the map. Here we have a map of the continent of North America, where we live. And here in the middle of the map is the United States of America. Okay. And here at the bottom is the big state of Texas. Okay. Texas is the second largest state in the United States. It's approximately 268,000 square miles. It's so big and diverse that it has four distinct geographical regions, which you guys just learned about in social studies. You should be experts already. Over on the west side of Texas, we have the mountains and basins region. We call it West Texas. It's bordered by the country of Mexico and the state of New Mexico. Big Bend National Park is in West Texas. It's a hot and dry climate in this region. They get less than 20 inches of rain a year. If you go there, you might actually see a mountain lion, maybe a jackrabbit, hope you don't see a rattlesnake. You could potentially go down the Rio Grande River in a canoe. You might see an oil well. The city of El Paso is also in the mountains and basins region. Let's go back to our friends and have them tell us about two other regions, the Great Plains and the Central Plains. The Great Plains is in yellow on the map. It's a big area and stretches from the Panhandle of Texas to the Rio Grande in the south. In the Great Plains, we would see Pleiades, plains, canyons, escarpments, and basins. Summers are cool and dry. The Red River is there separating Texas from Oklahoma. Then you might see oil wells there too, or lots of cattle. The city of Lubbock is in the Great Plains. 
The Central Plains is here in green. In the Central Plains, you will see valleys, hills, and plains. You might see armadillos, bobcats, and deer. They have hot summers with cool to cold winters, with thunderstorms and sometimes spring tornadoes. You might also see oil wells here, lots of oil in Texas. Soil is very rich and fertile in the Central Plains. You can see cotton growing or peanuts or wheat. Lots of cattle ranches here too. The city of Fort Worth is in the Central Plains. Hey guys, I hope you learned a lot from our friends. We have one final region to talk about and this is the region where you live, the Coastal Plains. It is the largest of the four regions and it's there in blue. It's south and east of the Central Plains region. Here we have rolling hills, we have aquifers, we have rivers, and we're near the Gulf of Mexico. Beach trip, anyone? It's pretty hot and humid here, you all know that. We sometimes get tropical storms or hurricanes. You could see an alligator, a wild boar, or maybe a rattlesnake or a deer. Oil is found here too, and the soil is very rich. People come here to see the sights the Alamo, or maybe the beaches on the coast. Houston and Austin are also in the coastal plains. I feel like I'm an expert on Texas now. How about you? So now, let's find Ukraine. We'll travel across the Atlantic Ocean to Europe. Lots of countries here, but Ukraine is right in the middle. So Ukraine is east of North America, but in the middle of Europe. The word Ukraine means land on the edge because it's on the edge of the eastern fringe of the European steppe. A steppe is a physical feature of land that's a lot like a plain. Ukraine has 233,000 square miles, so it's a little smaller than the state of Texas. Fun fact, did you know that in the country of Ukraine, this is where the horse was domesticated? That means that it went from being a wild animal to the horse we know today. Like Texas, Ukraine has four regions as well. Stretching across western Ukraine, are the Carpathian Mountains. Here you could find bears, wolves, snowy mountain peaks. In the center of Ukraine, you'll find steppes, which are kind of like the plains we have here in Texas. The soil here is super rich, so rich and fertile that they call Ukraine the bread basket of Europe because so much wheat is grown in the country. In fact, Ukraine is the world's third largest exporter of wheat. And in the center, you'll also find the capital city of Ukraine, Kiev. South Ukraine, you'll see the coast of the city of Odessa, which is beside the Black Sea. This region has forests and steppes, lots of agriculture here too, and the Crimean Mountains. Finally, we have Eastern Ukraine here in blue. Eastern Ukraine is often called Polesia. There you'll see forests mixed with marshes or bogs, lakes, and rivers. So now let's work together and have some fun. Your activity today will be putting together a map just like this with your teammates. When your maps are all in place and your teacher has checked it and said, yeah, you're good to go, you're gonna use your compass rose to help you answer some questions about both maps. Your teacher will set a timer, and when she calls time, the team with the most correct answers wins. Have fun and good luck. Oh, that reminds me, next week, we're gonna be traveling right into the heart of Ukraine where we'll learn about different smells, tastes, music, culture, clothing. It's going to be great. Be sure to come back and join us next week.